Hi there! It's me, Princess, your host for today. And to everyone who's joining us online, thank you so much. It really feels so good that knowing amidst this pandemic, we are still hanging on tight and worshipping together. Of course, not in a physical setting, but you know, it's the new thing. It's more safer and it's of course to obey protocols. And to everyone who is regularly joining us every Sunday, please don't forget to type in worshipping from and then state your location. And to our first time guests or viewers, please type in the word new so we can welcome you. Let us all encourage one another even though this is just in a virtual setting. Also, we have been very intentional when it comes to growth. We have growth groups. And what is this growth group we are talking about? This growth group is a smaller church, we say, where life, food, fellowship, growth, and especially the Word of God happen. So if you are interested, please fill out the form on the link flashed on your screen and join us to be serious in our walk with God. Of course, we are so thankful to our online viewers. We are always praying for you. And of course, if you have um, prayer requests, please don't forget to send them in at 0928-712-1833. And of course, through Facebook at GCF Iloilo FB page. To our online viewers, please don't forget to like, share, and mention at least five friends right now to join us. Of course, this is very important to share the Word of God and to spread it. Let us be an instrument to spread the Word of God. It is said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. One of the best ways to worship God is through giving. I know it's hard to give at this time of pandemic what to eat, how to survive, but you know, we got this because we have God on our side. So please um, let us search in our hearts to really give to God for the expansion of His kingdom. You can drop off your tithes and offerings via bank transfer or GCash at 0928-712-1833 or through bank transfer, which the details are flashed on your screen. Okay, now let us worship through songs led by our worship team. You are my strength when I am weak You are the treasure that I seek You are my all in all Seeking you as a precious jewel Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool You are my all in all Taking my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I am dry, you fill my cup You are my all in all you as a precious 
precious jewel Lord to give up by the shame rising again i bless your name you are my all in all when i fall down you pick me up when i am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Jesus.
Hi, GCF Iloilo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, greetings from GCF uh, South Metro Bacoor. And I do pray and hope that all is well with you. It's good to be back in your online worship service. And uh, how I truly wish I could be with you personally and have fellowship with you over a nice and delicious Ilongo meal. Um, really, I miss the fun there. I miss uh, uh, the, the, the fellowship among uh, our brothers and sisters there. Uh, but nevertheless, I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be with you virtually. Please know that as you have been praying for us, we have also been praying for you. For our message today, which is a not-so-typical uh, passage or text for a Sunday, uh, we will be going through the letter, that little book called Philemon. And I have entitled my message today as Fresh, uh, Strengthening One Another um, Even When Life Gets Tougher. Let's say that again. It's called Fresh, Strengthening One Another Even When Life Gets Tougher. While we will be walking through the entire letter for the purposes of our reading today, and I want you, uh, I want you to open your Bibles to uh, to Philemon. It's uh, right before the book of Hebrews, and I'd like for us to read verses four through twelve together. And uh, please continue to open your Bibles there, so that as we ask the Lord to. Uh, to speak to us, uh, we can take notes, we can write down, and uh, we can um, underline certain passages that God impresses in us as we study and reflect on the Word today. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to read uh, Philemon verses uh, 4 through 12. And uh, if uh, you would like to do so as a family, feel free to stand up in reverence to the Word of God. It says there, I thank my God always when I remember you 
in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become uh, effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much, jo much joy and, uh, and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Verse 8, Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you, I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. Praise God for the reading of his word. Why don't we recommit this time of worship in a word of prayer? Please join me. Father, thank you for your word is truth and your word is sets us free your truth sets us free thank you as well because even in this online space like facebook or youtube can be a sacred space as we set this time apart for you and for your purpose would you have your way in us O oh god and will you grant us fresh wisdom fresh insight as we dive into your word today and as we apply them in the power of your spirit. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This short letter that we will be going through today is composed of uh, mainly three characters. Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon. Uh, let's repeat that. Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon. Philemon, uh, let me start with him, appears to have been a a, a wealthy Colossian who owned slaves, as did most of the rich in his day. He evidently came to faith in Christ as a result of Paul's ministry, perhaps when Paul was residing at Ephesus. Now, interestingly, Onesimus, on the other hand, was one of Philemon's um, slaves and was probably a native Frisian. And it's good to take note that the, this people group, the, the Frisian slaves, have this uh, uh, um, reputation of being unreliable, of being unfaithful. Now, while we don't have the exact reasons uh, and it's not clear as to the kind of offense made or nature of conflict that they have, we can understand that Onesimus ran away from his master Probably not because Philemon treated him cruelly, but perhaps because he dealt with him graciously even if Onesimus did something wrong. Probably it's relating to shame or guilt. But one of the salient reasons uh, that, the, that are discussed, that is discussed among scholars with regards to this issue, uh, typically points to the issue of, uh, of money or possessions. But the point is, they have... Uh, there is a tension or a conflict happening here. So he eventually made his way to Rome. Onesimus made his way to Rome and then there by divine appointment, he came into contact with Paul and he became a Christian. Now from, a, from both a theological and practical perspective, Philemon in a particular illustrates for us the outworking of uh, in the life of the great doctrines taught in the other writings of Paul, uh, especially the other prison epistles like Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. In this little book, there are pictures of individuals, pictures of how relationships work, and pictures of Christian doctrine and pictures of disobedience. In short, uh, it's a very practical book. It, it is packed with theology in action. So understanding this big backdrop, backdrop, we will learn or will look at the big idea of this letter. And as we begin wrapping our minds and our hearts around this big idea, we will pick up some puzzle pieces, some clues here and there, uh, and glean the principles we ought to learn and apply in our lives as followers of Jesus. So are you still with me? No? If you're still with me, kahit hindi ko kayo nakikita, do a thumbs up. Thumbs up tayo dyan, or double thumbs up, alright? 
um, make sure that your uh, seatmate, kung may kasama kayo, uh, is awake, is wide awake. So if not, um, wake him or her up. Uh, we, we want to get into the Word of God and engage ourselves into the Word of God. So remember, remember this big idea that as a church family, let us strengthen one another when life gets tougher. Again, as a church family, let us strengthen one another even when life gets tougher. Life has not been easy since uh, 2020 and now in 2021. And moving into 2022, there's a lot of uncertainties involved. Therefore, the follow-up questions that we, we, that we would like to ask about this big idea is why? Why do we need to strengthen one another? <clears throat> On what basis? That's another way to put it. Or another question is how? In what manner? How does it look like to strengthen one another these days? And my first proposal to you, or for all of us, is this. Based on verse 1 through 7, let us strengthen one another by being tangible or visible expressions of love and faith. In Paul's greeting, it says, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the house, or the, the church in your house. Interesting, no? Uh, parang time lang natin ngayon. The church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God and our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, kanina binasa natin yung text, no? Sa scripture reading. And in verse 4 to 7, we see key elements in Paul's encouragement. We see Paul expressing thanks for Philemon. And he reports that he constantly prays for him. He explains also why he gives thanks to Philemon, mentioning his love, mentioning his faith, and then tells Philemon what he is praying for him. But I want us to focus on verse 7. In verse 7, it says, where, where it, we see, I have derived much joy. Sabi ni Paul, I have derived much joy and comfort from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. And this word refresh is interesting because it can be both a state of uh, revival or a state of restedness, which I believe most of us, if not all of us, badly need today. We need to refresh one another. We need to strengthen one another so that we can continue to do the work that the Lord has set before us. Let's admit it. It's been so tiring. So tiring to hear the news. So tiring to uh, hear and get messages of people getting sick. But at the same time, it's amazing how the Lord works in His church. Uh, in, in us, in among us, in GCF South Metro Bacoor, which you have been also been praying for, it's amazing how the church helps one another in this time of the pandemic. How, for example, um, probably we're on the same page that uh, family members, no, it's not just uh, single individuals, now families upon families are getting sick. And so because they could not go out, they could not go to the market, they could not go to the grocery, it's amazing how families who, um, who themselves are going through troubles of every kind are sharing their resources sending over uh, food, groceries, no? or non-food items, uh, mga toiletries, to, to these families in need. And it's amazing how they do so um, faithfully, sacrificially, with much love. And to see how God is at work in the church, and how I see God at work in your church, in GCF Iloilo, must bring a time of refreshing no? It, it should wipe away the anxieties no? in our hearts. It should quiet our hearts. It should refresh us. And I share this with you with joy because I want to thank you for praying with us and to enjoy you to keep praying with us. I also pray that God would strengthen you. I pray that uh, you would get to see and witness for yourself how God is working in your midst. So again, the question that we want to ask, how can we refresh one another? The first, let us strengthen one another by being tangible expressions of love and faith. Second, let us strengthen one another by extending radical grace. Radical grace. No? In the following verses, starting from verse 8, Though I am bold enough, sabi dito, in 
bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you. So this is a, a, a request, a wholehearted request. Uh, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is uh, indeed useful to you and to me. And I am sending him back to you. Uh, feel the tension here. Feel the air of emotion here. Sending my very heart. Uh, you can you can uh, put a mark there. no? And in verse 13, sabi don, I would have been glad to keep him with me. In order that I might uh, he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment uh, for the gospel, but I prefer to do nothing without your concern, in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, it's not by force, but out of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bond servant. Uh, but instead of a being a bond servant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Here we get to understand how the backstory unfolds. We see that since the conversion of Onesimus, he became a valuable helper to the Apostle Paul. Onesimus means helpful or useful. Paul uh, desired to keep um, Onesimus with him, but he felt a greater responsibility to, re to return the slave to his Christian master. So Onesimus had to make things right with Philemon, whom he had wronged. However, Paul and Onesimus both knew the danger that a, s a slave faced in returning since slave owners had absolute authority over their slaves and often treated them as property rather than as people. That's the kind of culture that they had. But Paul wrote this brief appeal to talk heart to heart, heart to heart with Philemon and to effect a reconciliation between the slave and the master. You know, at times I would reflect on, on Paul in this. No? Many times, of course, we talk about uh, the case of Philemon and Onesimus. But if you think about Paul, no? as we pause and ponder about this letter, it's good to ask, why would Paul bother who himself had his own struggles to, be, to, to, to bear with, to deal with? Why would he bother and have to allot so much time and effort about this matter? Right? Aren't there civil laws that would cover or resolve this issue? Now, it's quite clear that in this letter, Paul is not really dealing with the question of slavery. In this verse, at least, he treats the question of brotherly love. Brotherly love. Although Onesimus' earthly freedom may be of positive value, um, in the final analysis, it is of no ultimate significance to him as a Christian as to whether he is slave or free. What matters is whether one has accepted God's call to follow or to obey. Even if it means a lot of, con of inconvenience, even if it is opposite to what the culture dictates, even if it will entail extending grace upon grace upon grace. This is quite relevant for us because relationship issues are not only at home, but even at work, even in school, even at church. They bear a huge burden on us. And whether we, ac we accept it or we, or we deny it, the truth is relationships are tested in this time of the pandemic. It is true, my brothers and sisters. We can literally just zoom into our meetings, our online schooling, and yet neglect the people within our home. No? Uh, we can just uh, uh, fight with people, argue with people over social media. And then after that, just disconnect. Hindi kayo magkabate, unfriend, right? Unfollow. Now, I think most of us thought that why would we would have more time for na parang we would have more time for rest and recreation in this pandemic because we are doing work from home or study from home? 
Pero parang it's gotten actually even more hard. It's complicated having to work from home, having to study from home, having to stay too long and have this uh, um, cabin fever causes a lot of tension, a lot of conflicts, a lot of uh, chaos at home and even beyond. But because we have an ever-present and covenant-keeping God who authored relationships and He called us, He, He also equips us, we can rise above today's challenges and through the agency of the lord's spirit through the church we can also strengthen one another as one family under the banner of christ earlier we've learned that we ought to be tangible expressions of love and faith and that we ought to extend tangible grace but i want to also propose we ought to learn to forgive we are to strengthen one another by learning to forgive. The following text reads, So if you consider me your partner, receive me, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, take note, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. To say nothing of your owing me even your own self, Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your um, obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers, I will be graciously given to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Look, my fellow workers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Praise God. I want to say congratulations to you. If you have not completed reading one part or one book of the Bible, you have just finished it now. You have finished one more book of the Bible just in one day, no? even in less than one hour. Praise God. But before we celebrate, let's look at Paul's language here. Paul's usage of the term partner must not be reduced to mean merely just an intimate friend or or companion. No? No, parang partner, it's not just like that. It suggests a deep kind of fellowship. Fellowship or partnership of those who have common interests, common affections, common work. That's the essence of the idea of partner. It's a spiritual fellowship that has a double aspect, a fellowship horizontally, no, or sorry, vertically between us and the Lord. We are enjoying that fellowship with God vertically, and there is a horizontal um, dimension to it, no, uh, meaning relationship with other people. Or if you want to put it in another way, I call it the IOU framework. Inward, as God works inwardly, outwardly towards other people, and it is initiated with an upward uh, dimension by God's work um, in us. So it's the partnership of mutual Christian faith and life. And it is upon Philemon's acceptance of this fellowship that Paul bases his appeal. I remember Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 48. Some of you may be familiar with it. No, Some of you probably have... Uh, uh, have shared it with somebody, have heard it in a wedding, have probably memorized it. No, uh, Paul says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist in its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And he wrote this both with um, affection, with, with much gusto, not really in a wedding scene, not even in a fiesta, no? but in the middle of a season of a troubled church, going through confusion, having untamed passions, going through division. And Paul is calling the church 
love one another. And here we see in Philemon such love in action through this appeal of extending mercy and forgiveness. Paul was essentially saying, whatever that Onesimus lacks, charge it to my account. Sagot ko na siya. Hindi niya na kailangan magbayad. Charge it to my account. It should be a done deal already. Charge it to my account. And I could just imagine Paul being so bold and yet loving about this appeal as he himself understood how much he is loved, how much grace he's been given, how much, you know, the depth of forgiveness that was apportioned to him in Christ and through Christ. In, in GCF Bakuor, I've always uh, practiced this with, with us. What do I mean by this? These hand gestures of this one and this one. One movement, second movement. Grace received from the Lord. Grace released to others. Mercy received from the Lord. Mercy released to other people. Forgiveness received. Forgiveness released. And I say this and I do this because of the profound truth and beauty of forgiveness that is ultimately expressed on the cross of Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. For in the cross of Christ, we see Jesus as if exclaiming to all of us in all mercy and love for all of us sinners, charge that sin, charge the penalty of sin to my account. I have paid it all. Huh? Yung ginawa ni Mike Duko, I've paid it all. Ni Mark, ni Anna, ni James, ni Mira, no? ni Joy, ni Jun, whoever, ni Aryan, ni Boy, ni Girl. No? Lahat ng yan to those who would believe. The truth is, Christ has paid it all and has charged it under his account, signed by the signature of Christ through his blood. We were all once useless. In fact, we are dead, dead because of sin. But in Christ, we became useful for his purpose and for his glory. Do you want to be more loving? Do you want to be more forgiving? Do you want to be more understanding and gracious? then look to the Lord. Remember the cross of Christ. So beloved church family in GCF Iloilo and beyond, whatever time zone that you may be in, as we learn to further appreciate this vertical reality that Christ has given to us, let this be a horizontal reality to the people around us. Let this be real in the way that we conduct ourselves at work, in school, in church, in social media, but much more, even in the privacy of our homes where nobody is looking. There's no people to like your post. Because when we are private with God and with all of our family members, grab your testing. And John 13, 35 says, For this all people will know, that you are my disciples, says Jesus, if you have love for one another. And because I'm not here all the time to preach to you, to bring God's word to you, I want to greet you all in advance. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's, uh, let's all look forward to 2022. Finish this 2021. Finish it well. And look forward to 2022 with a fresh perspective, with a fresh energy from the Lord, fresh strength, fre fresh fire and passion from God. Because even when things get tougher, 
we can start by strengthening and refreshing one another by being tangible expressions of love and faith, extending radical grace to each other, and learning to forgive. Why? Because Jesus did all these things towards us. Why don't we do the same for others? And may this be a powerful witness to this broken, chaotic world that is in dire need of hope. Of hope that can only be found in Christ. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for the seeds of truth that you have embedded into our hearts today. While these may not be new for many of us, we admit that we fail at this call many times. So as you speak into our, our hearts, O oh God, deal with our self-centeredness, our pride, our greed. So here we are, Lord. We look to you once again. We ask for your grace so that we may walk the path of joyful obedience that translates to a life set apart for your purpose, for your glory. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, before I say goodbye to you, I have some questions that I want to leave with you for further reflection and sharing with your loved ones at home. I pray that this would lead to great spiritual conversations. First, how has your relationships been tested in this time of pandemic? Let's be honest. Identify two or three things that you have personally observed or yourself uh, have experienced. You know? And then number two, among the three main points, three main exhortations I've made that were mentioned in the passage to be tangible expressions of love and faith, extending um, radical grace, learning to forgive, which one resonated with you the most? Which one clicked in you the most? Something that is so relatable with your situation. Now, in that one item you chose out of the three, how do you plan to apply it this coming week? Remember, the Word of God, the power of God is available, not only for our knowledge, but for us to respond to in loving obedience to God. Again, thank you. Thank you for the privilege to preach the Word of God to you today, beloved GCF Iloilo. God bless you, and I'll see you again soon. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. When striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, does stand. There in the ground, his body lay. Light of the world, my dark has slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his. Mine, but 
with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the of Christ I'll stand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand here in the power of Christ I'll stand wow Amazing! Thank you so much, Reverend Mike Duco, for the message. Okay, to our online viewers, and Jan pa ba kayo? To our GCF Human Mailan and Rojas family, thank you so much for joining us today. I encourage each one of you to please chew the meat or the message that we have heard today. Please don't forget to have an insight. And in GCF Iloilo, we call it one inspiration and as an application of that one inspiration it's called one application so we have one inspiration and one application we will be giving you five minutes to really process the message and please send in your one inspiration and one application to our social media accounts such as FB at GCF Iloilo FB page or Instagram at GCF Iloilo or you may text them in at 0928-712-1833 Have a great day everyone! See you next Sunday! Stay safe!